The following program, The Russ Belleville Show, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on The Russ Belleville Show are their own and the Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. Then it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. Yeah! From the promise of legalization. Uh, and I think that we need to rethink and decriminalize uh, our, uh, our marijuana laws. To the agony of prohibition. One major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Rough Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. Now, here's your host, Radical Russ Belleville. We love it. Good day, Tokers and Tokets, and welcome. We made it to the weekend. It is Friday, October 11th, 2013, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. Thanks for being here. We got all sorts of stuff to take you into the weekend in style with the latest news, interviews, headlines, and information about this plant we all love so much, Cannabis Sativa L. So glad to have you here. Make sure you check out 420radio.org. You can get podcasts of this show if you prefer to listen in your car or while you're working out or trimming and harvesting whatever it is you might be doing we've got a podcast for you not only this show but a lot of our shows here at 420 radio all you got to do is go to 420radio.org and click on the schedule link to find out when your shows are on click on the podcast link to get the downloadable podcast and remember if you're a VIP member of 420 Radio, you get even more podcasts to choose from, including our Two's Toker Talk Radio podcast and the Daily Toker Tunes podcast, five different podcasts with five different genres of music, a new tune every week. So check that out at 420radio.org. All right, on today's show, we have got a preview of the High Times Cannabis Cup that's coming up in Amsterdam next month. Mike G. from High Times will be with us to discuss that and the upcoming issue of High Times Magazine. Also, make sure you check out hightimes.com, where I have been writing quite a bit. They've been publishing a lot of my articles, almost one per day. You can find those at hightimes.com and reposted the next week at my personal website, RadicalRust.com. Also on the show today, we are going to take time for a radical rant and take a look at what could be a possible alliance between cigarette smokers and cannabis users, specifically with respect to the marketing and popularity of the new e-cigarettes, or what we know as vaporizers. The mainstream media is just getting around to this issue, and they're starting the scaremongering machine already. So we'll talk about that in the radical rant. Also on today's show, in Behind the Headlines, we're going to talk about the uh, baby boom generation and how the rehabbers are trying to exaggerate the use of drugs by the baby boom generation by exaggerating, by including how much cannabis they're using. We'll take a look at what the numbers look like if you don't include cannabis. And in hour two, just today, just this afternoon, Kevin Sabet spoke in Iowa. We'll take a look at his lies and the debunking you need to tell the truth about cannabis in Iowa. Because you know, we owe a lot to Iowa Pot. Stick around. We'll be right back. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisements because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Bellwood Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Cast your eyes up to the skies. What is it to live and die? The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the only way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. 
Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent and I want to speak to my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at www.omarfigueroa.com. Cannabis Outreach Collective is an alternative health and wellness option located in Gladstone, Oregon that serves patients in the Portland area and beyond. We are a full-service alternative health and wellness collective accommodating patients with natural, organic, holistic, and homeopathic remedies, nutritional guidance, advice, education, and medical cannabis fully in accordance with Oregon OMMP law. You can find out more about Cannabis Outreach Collective on Facebook at COC503 or by emailing CannabisOutreachCollective503 at gmail.com or by telephone at 503-853-1319. Check out our menu on Weed Maps and visit Cannabis Outreach Collective today. This is your 420 Radio News for Friday, October 11th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Denver Ordinance Could Make Smell of Marijuana Illegal from Huffington Post. A new city ordinance being considered in Denver could make the smell of marijuana, or even just the sight of someone smoking marijuana, illegal if it can be smelled or seen by others. Denver Mayor Hancock told the Denver Post, quote, your activities should not pervade others' peace and ability to enjoy. Marijuana is one of those elements that can be quite pervasive and invasive. I shouldn't have to smell your activities from your backyard. End quote. Violations of the proposed rules, if passed, would carry fines of up to $999 or a year in jail, 7 News reports. But backers of Amendment 64 in Colorado say the proposed ordinance isn't just unconstitutional, it's hypocritical, as the new rule is being considered during the same weekend as Denver celebrates another substance, beer, with the nation's largest celebration of beer, the Great American Beer Festival, taking place in the city. Pot dispensary co-owner gets six-month sentence from San Francisco Gate. The co-owner of a large-scale medical marijuana dispensary in Hayward was sentenced to six months in prison Thursday for money laundering and conspiracy, one of the shorter terms imposed in recent federal prosecutions of pot suppliers. Abraham Norton of Oakland will also serve six months in a halfway house and forfeit $600,000 to the government. Federal agents raided the Norton's Compassion Patients Collective in 2007 and seized drugs, money, and two luxury cars. In their guilty pleas, they acknowledged $56 million in marijuana sales over the previous three years. The brothers had an operating permit from Alameda County and said they'd been assured by Sheriff Charles Plummer that the federal government would leave them alone if they complied with state and local laws. The charges carried sentences that could have been at least 15 years in prison. Los Angeles City Attorney moves to shut down illegal pot shops from the Los Angeles Times. Los Angeles City Attorney Mike Foyer said his office is moving to shut down 38 medical marijuana dispensaries operating outside the requirements of a voter-approved May ballot measure intended to reduce their number. Foyer said his office is filing new prosecutions every week. In office since July 1st, Foyer said the actions mark, quote, a new day, end quote, for medicinal marijuana regulation in Los Angeles. Under Measure D, pot shop operators and landlords leasing space are subject to prosecution. Dozens of shops shut down on their own after Foyer's office sent out letters informing dispensaries of the new rules. About 135 pot outlets meet the voter-approved criteria for continuing to operate and won't be prosecuted, Foyer said. But if they are within 600 feet of a park, a school, or a child care facility, they will have to move, he said. Canada's Breaking Bad is a pot grower in a chocolate factory, from Bloomberg.com. 
An abandoned factory once owned by Hershey Company in Canada may soon be making products that offer a bigger buzz than a chocolate kiss. Marijuana, under license by the government of Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Canada's health department in June said it would end a system allowing people to grow medicinal pot in their homes and instead have companies supply the drug. The licensing of output is a, quote, tightening up versus loosening up, end quote, of drug laws because it separates, quote, the legitimate from the illicit use, end quote, said Mark Mander, chairman of a drug panel for the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police and head of police in Kentville, Nova Scotia. Homegrown pot has led to, quote, unintended consequences, end quote, that hurt public safety and led to people abusing the system, Health Canada said in June when it published the rules. The location at 1 Hershey Drive has the advantage of being across the street from the local police station, said the owner of the company, Bruce Linton, Tweed Incorporated. Canada's plan for secure large-scale sanctioned production may be emulated by other countries, he said. When it comes to marijuana, North Korea appears to have little care about it. North Korea's apparent stance on marijuana may surprise you, writes Huffington Post. According to multiple reports from defectors, visitors, and experts, North Korea either has no law against the sale and consumption of weed, or it has a law that is largely unenforced. A 2010 report by Open Radio for North Korea, an American non-governmental organization based in Seoul, cited anonymous North Korean sources saying that Kim Jong-un's regime does not consider marijuana to be a drug. This has been your 420 Radio News for Friday, October 11th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines to take a look at at addi addiction specialists that are exaggerating the drug use of the baby boomers. You're listening to the Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. Starting up a medical cannabis business, you don't just want any attorney. You want a fired up lawyer who understands the needs of cannabis consumers. The law office of Lauren Vasquez is your fired up lawyer for the cannabis industry. Lauren Vasquez knows the details of California marijuana law from both a personal and professional angle. Lauren Vasquez rose from the ranks of college normal activists to become one of the Bay Area's best marijuana lawyers. Visit her website, firedupmoyer.com, or call 1-855-MMJ-LAWS for more information. That's 855-665-5297 for Lauren Vasquez, your Fired Up Lawyer, or email firedupmoyer at gmail.com. The number again is 855-MMJ-LAWS, 855-665-5297 for your Fired Up Lawyer, Lauren Vasquez. Lauren Vasquez is an activist attorney you can trust. Call today. I'm a reefer smoking man. Woodpipe Smoke Shop and Speakeasy is your source for cannabis community gear in southern Wisconsin. Owners Brian and Tammy Wood are located in Kendall, just outside of Madison, and they've got everything for the smoking enthusiast including a full assortment of pipes, water pipes, hookahs, bubblers, one-hitters, and so much more. They're open noon to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and can help you with your detoxification therapies as well. Call 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com for more information. That's 608-466-7473 or email woodpipes at yahoo.com. And as always, Go Pack Go! We've got a great set of shows airing every weekday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time here at 420 Radio. But if you miss them on the weekdays, you can catch them on Sunday evenings from 7 p.m. to midnight on 420 Radio. Starting with the Hollywood Hemptress Hour at 7 p.m., Marijuana Compassion and Common Sense at 8, Hemp Radio at 9 p.m., Professionals Against Prohibition at 10 p.m., and closing things out with the podcast at 11 p.m. Pacific Time every Sunday right here at 420radio.org.
Welcome back, everyone. Time for us to go behind the headlines. It's 15 after the hour, and today I want to talk about addiction specialists who are exaggerating the illicit drug addiction among baby boomers. Dr. Barbara Krantz is the CEO of the Hanley Center, which is promoting its Center for Boomer Recovery. (sighs) Featured on CBS's early show, the New York Times, and the Huffington Post, Dr. Krantz makes her case for her company's age-specific drug rehab center dedicated to people aged 50 and older, colloquially known as the baby boomers. On her website, under the heading, Realities of Boomer Addiction, Dr. Krantz explains, quote, Alcohol and prescription drugs, or both, are baby boomers' substances of choice, yet illegal drug use may have continued or resurfaced from their youth, end quote. The New York Times adds, quote, According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, use of illegal substances is increasing in adults over 50, end quote. Huffington Post breathlessly warns that, quote, For adults aged 50 to 54, the percentage of consumers of illicit substances more than doubled from 3.4% in 2002 to 7.2% last year. For those aged 55 to 59, it more than tripled from 1.9% to 6.6%, end quote. Well, a look at the facts belies Dr. Krantz's rent-seeking exaggerations. The National Survey on Drug Use and Health publishes all its data online, and you know me, I look shit up. I decided to look at the numbers for people in their 50s. And once again, we find that cannabis generates most of the increase that Dr. Krantz wants us to be frightened by. In the survey numbers, there is a variable that is called illicit drug use other than marijuana. When we look at those data, in 2004-2005, we find that 4.1% of all boomers aged 50 to 54 and 1.9% of those aged 50 to 59 used something illegal other than pot. By 2010-2011, the 50 to 54 number increased to 5.8%, and the 55 to 59 number increased to 3.7%. In other words, if you leave out cannabis, annual illicit drug use didn't double from age 50 to 54. It went up by less than half, about 41%. And annual illicit use didn't triple from 55 to 59. It just almost doubled. However, if we take a look at another variable and restrict the drug surveyed for the variable to pain relievers past month use, we do find some alarming numbers for baby boomers. For ages 50 to 54, monthly pain reliever use did almost double from 0.8% to 1.5% in the span of years between 2002-2003 and 2010-2011. So over eight years, we have a doubling in monthly pain reliever use for those aged 50 to 54, and at age 50, 55 to 59, also a doubling from 0.4% to a little over 0.7% over the same eight-year time frame. Again, most of Dr. Krantz's fear-mongering about people in their 50s using more illicit substances owes to cannabis. More boomers are using cannabis with double the rate of 50 to 54-year-olds, from 2.5% to 4.9%, and triple the rate of 55 to 59-year-olds, from 1.1% to 3.7%, who are using marijuana annually. Maybe instead of demonizing the baby boomers who have rekindled their relationship with Mary Jane, we ought to encourage it. Given that we've got the 50-year-olds doubling their monthly use of pain relievers, And that's with baby boomers doubling and tripling their use of cannabis. We ought to do more to encourage the use of cannabis and bring down those pain reliever numbers. Now, I attempted to to tease out those pain reliever numbers to try to find out how much of that owed to oxycodone, how much of that owed to hydrocodone. Uh, Unfortunately, the way the uh, survey numbers work is if you get a number that's too small, it won't reveal that because of privacy concerns. 
you know, we don't if, if the number is less than 50 respondents. So I couldn't get you specifically oxy or specifically hydrocodone, uh, but we do have the use of pain relievers doubling among people in their 50s. Let's turn them on back on to Mary Jane now that the kids are out of the house and get those pain reliever numbers down. Speaking of getting our pain reliever numbers down, it is 20 after the hour, and we are here with Brian the Red. Yeah. And we've also got uh, Snap and Stony hanging out with us. And Kitty. And Kitty. And our Kitty. Isis. Yes. So it is, what is it, Fired Up Friday? Is that it? Fired Up Friday. All right. Fired Up. Fired Up. Fired Up. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel produces quality custom designs for t-shirts, hats, and other apparel. Handmade Apparel is the official design shop for 420 Radio, The Russ Belville Show, Ganja John, and Cascadia Concentrates, among many clients who rely on Adam Hand for everything from short-run custom projects to full-run clothing lines. Adam's meticulous designs are individually crafted and screened in vibrant high-definition color. Visit handmadeapparel.biz to browse the selection of handmade gear or to get a personal quote for your own designs. Handmade Apparel, a proud supporter of 420radio.org. Tokers, there's no good reason to get your dog stoned. While it might not harm them physically, imagine being a dog who already begs for treats all day, and then imagine that dog having the munchies. Not cool. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Toker Tunes, the best in pod safe 420 music from around the web. Today is Rockin' Friday, featuring rock, metal, and the hard edge of alternative country. You can get downloads and more information about all our Daily Toker Tunes by visiting music.radicalrust.com. Now, Sit back and enjoy your daily Toker tune. Welcome back, everybody. 22 after the hour. Time for us to rock. Turn it up to 11. Put your horns up because we've got Herb Thrasher on the line from the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. How you doing, Herb? Man, I'm doing great. Uh, another beautiful week here in uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, as far as Canada's week goes, you know, I've had it a little bit rough. So much bad news coming out of my home state of Alabama. But I'm regrouping, and it's Friday, and I'm ready to rock and have some weed. So it's all good. That's right. We've been getting some terrible reports out of the state of Alabama. We're going to dig into that this weekend and see if we can't get that written up for High Times Magazine. Because I think I think one of the things that happens is people out west in Colorado and California, Oregon, Washington kind of you know, uh, rest on our laurels a little bit. We got it so good, we forget that our brothers and sisters in places like Alabama are, are still being taken down. Yeah, and that's definitely true. And uh, it's also fair to flip the coin and to say that some of our brothers and sisters in the South might not know as much or have as much uh, confidence about doing certain things as those of us out here. And it's time for, for both to start kind of mingling uh, a little bit better. That's right. That's right. Let's bring that wave of legalization eastward and southward and make all 50 states legal states. That's what I'm looking forward to. All right. We got Herb Thrasher Flower Hour coming up tonight at 8 o'clock Pacific time. Make sure you tune in live. We'll have all sorts of great rock for you like this next tune. And I got to tell you, Herb, when I saw this coming through, at first I thought it said Astro Lube, and I was wondering, what the hell are you up to? <laughs> No, we'll save that for hour two, uh, those kind of uh, songs. Uh, won't put it on Rockin' Friday, but we're always open for her thrasher if you can find one. But no, this one is uh, comes from a band called Looter, and uh, they are signed to Small Stone Records. By the way, folks, kind of that's... funny that they are signed to Small Stone Records because the owner of Small Stone Records is the guitar player of Looter. Yeah, and folks so should know that, that Looter is spelled L-U-D-E-R. It's not like Looter, like someone who steals during a riot. That's exactly right. L-U-D-E-R. And you can find their Facebook page, uh, Looter Band. But a uh, great tune. It's actually Astrolabe. And a uh, very 
progressive, psychedelic rock. Uh, these songs are, are, are very textured, uh, you know, smooth. Uh, a lot of mix of rock and roll. Some would say uh, if you go back to some of the Portishead, head and then, and then you look at some Black Sabbath and such a weird combination, but you would have something such as this. Uh, I like to think uh, more on the Concrete Blonde lines, if you guys remember mm-hmm. that band, one of my favorites from the 90s and so. But you guys definitely uh, check this tune out. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's definitely rock. Uh, definitely has a lot of riffs. And they have a band camp, like Small Stone Band Camp, and then type in, app, I, ha- I hate saying this word. It's the name of the album. Adelphophagia? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Just type in that, and you can listen to this whole album for free. It's streaming right now. So you guys check it out. Check out Looter. Check out Herb Flash Fire Hour tonight at 8 p.m. and uh, have your bowls packed. All right, pack the bowls, folks. This is Lunar with Astrolabe. Off the album, Adelphophagia. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the tune. See you later, Herb.
That's Luder with Astrolabe off of Small Stone Records. Check out smallstonerecords.com for more great music. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook wove all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history. Profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. 420radio.org is listener-supported marijuana legalization 24-hour cannabis community radio, and we can't do it without your support. Sign up to become a VIP member of 420 Radio today by visiting 420radio.org and clicking on the Donate button at the top of the screen. You can do a one-time donation or become a VIP with a small monthly donation. Starting at $9.99 per month, you can do a direct action to help support marijuana legalization education right here on the Internet. Support 420radio.org You'll be glad you did. Skip the session started because it's 420. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has been the chronicle of the cannabis community. The Russ Belleville Show visits with West Coast editor Dave Bienenstock for a look forward to the next issue and the next marijuana events in our High Times preview. Yo. Welcome back at 1.33 after the hour. We don't have Dave Bean in stock with us, and we don't have Mike G with us today, unfortunately. All the staff at High Times unable to uh, get to us today. They're so busy getting ready for the High Times Cannabis Cup taking place in Amsterdam next month. November 24th through 28th. If you want information on the Cannabis Cup, just go to CannabisCup.com or HighTimes.com. They've got links to it there as well. And uh, I know that we've had all these Cannabis Cups in uh, Denver and Seattle now, the U.S. Cannabis Cup. And then, of course, the Medical Cannabis Cup still exist in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Detroit. And that might lead some people to think, you know, why do I need to go all the way to Amsterdam? And folks, I got to tell you, I've never been there myself, but everybody that I've talked to said going to Amsterdam is still something that as a toker you should try. Because while it is legal in Seattle and Denver, you know, Colorado and Washington, they don't have the benefit of 30 years worth of tolerance for the culture. And when you go into a coffee shop and you see so many people that are just freely enjoying themselves and society think that's, thinks that is okay, that is definitely something that needs to be experienced. Here's some video from High Times to hopefully make the case for going to Amsterdam. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Danny Danko here, Senior Cultivation Editor of High Times Magazine, and I'm here in Amsterdam at the DNA Genetics shop here on St. Nicholas Strat, and I'm with Don from DNA Genetics. You guys are celebrating 10 years now in the business of uh, seeds and breeding, and pretty much won or placed in almost every contest you guys have entered into with your seeds, huh? Yeah, it's been that way. We've been on a kind of a big run, and it's kind of waiting for the, the wave to crest, and it never has. So You guys have this new limited collection as well, um, and tell me a little bit about this. These are like uh, signed and numbered. Uh, what we did is we had you know, maximum 2,000 packs of any variety, and we did eight, fem or eight regular strains and five feminized. Everyone's asking for regulars and thinking that nobody you know wants to do regulars we started our company basically just regulars that was how we started we didn't do feminized till few year, few years after we started so we said yeah we'll bring back some regulars and so we used our captain crypt mail that we had from years ago from before you know a lot of seed banks even existed 
and used this and created this line of regulars, the eight you know eight varieties of the Captain Crip male regulars and five feminized. And so they're all numbered. There's only two thousand of each, and once they're gone, they're gone. And so yeah, it's pretty cool. Right on, right on. Well, uh, um, and, and these are also available at Seedsman.com, right, for people uh, in, the, in places where you guys might not distribute to. Uh, yeah, they're, they're available all over Seedsman. We've been, you know, I've been knowing Tom for years, and we definitely do a lot of good business with Seedsman, so definitely uh, we recommend them. Yeah, right on. Yeah, they're also celebrating 10 years, so uh, yeah, check them out at Seedsman.com. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the tangy. This is like, uh, I've been hearing so much about this strain. You guys uh, have been winning with that as well. Yeah, the tangy has been going crazy. I mean, the tangy man, he basically, yeah, he found a winner. And what we've done is we've basically been putting out, um, you know, win after win after win with the tangy. And, you know, our boys, you know, Dabzilla and Dab King, you know, that was running Reserva for a while, they were really killing it with, you know, the last few cups have been, you know, they've grown the flower, they've, you know, made the, 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 the concentrate and won with it, you know. And so that's another exciting thing is they're actually breaking free and they're becoming, you know, Big Sky Seed Company, their own individual thing, which is the first for Reserva Pravada because, you know, we, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we're, we're breaking free and becoming their own thing, and that's, you know, that's perfect because, uh, yeah, they definitely have enough good shit to stand on their own. All right, Don. Well, thank you very much. Uh, DNA Genetics, check them out at seedsman.com. Congratulations on 10 years uh, of winning trophies and creating great genetics. Thank you, Danny. Congratulations, you too.
That's highlights from the High Times U.S. Cannabis Cup in Seattle. And before that, the video with Danny Danko at DNA Genetics in uh, Amsterdam, imploring you to come out to the Amsterdam Cannabis Cup. Thanks to our friends at High Times Magazine for all the videos and support throughout the years. And uh, who knows, if a miracle happens, maybe I'll fly to Amsterdam too. We'll see. Need a real big miracle. We come back. We got time for a radical rant. We're going to talk about the alliance of smokers and tokers. The voice of the Marijuana Nation. I'm Sub Cool from Team Green Avenger. At TGAgenetics.com, we are working on the leading edge of medical strains. Our strains are rigorously tested for THC, CBD, THCV, and other critical cannabinoids. Know your grow. Check out our genetic diversity at TGAgenetics.com. The home of Jelly Bean, Jack the Ripper, Vortex, and other award-winning cannabis strains. Hey, Joey, I got some stuff you just gotta try. What is it? Pot. You know, marijuana. Oh, well, I don't know. What, chicken? Joey's in a jam. What should he do? Uh, cake. Get a pizza. Excellent. Get a pizza. Get real. Get you got it. Let's see if Joey's that smart. Uh, I'm not chicken. You're a turkey. He's right. Drug dealers are dorks. Don't even talk to them. Cowabunga! Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook wove all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history, profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. I have to say that there, there was one question that was voted on that, that ranged fairly high, uh, and that was whether legalizing marijuana would improve uh, the economy and job creation. I don't know what this says about the online audience, but uh, the answer is no, I don't think that is a good strategy to grow our economy. So. Nearly one million lives wrecked by a marijuana arrest every year, Mr. President. Politely tell President Obama what you think about legalization by calling the White House at 202 456 1111. Welcome back, everyone. 420radio.org, Russ Belville Show. I want to encourage you to check out our website at 420radio.org, now redesigned with a mobile-friendly player for your smartphone or tablet. Check it out, 420radio.org. You want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin temple. You can't handle the truth. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> Radical rant. All right, folks, for today's Radical Rant, I want to talk a little bit about the phenomenon of e-cigarettes. It's just starting to get noticed by the mainstream media. And before I rant, I want to give you a look at a couple of commercials just to set the context. 
First one stars Stephen Dorff. Negative one. I'm tired of being a walking ashtray. Negative two. I'm tired of feeling guilty every time I want to light up. I'm Stephen Dorff. I've been a smoker for 20 years. And I just found the smarter alternative. Blue E6. Blue lets me enjoy smoking without it affecting the people around me. Because it's vapor, not tobacco smoke. That means no ash. And best of all, no offensive odor. With Blue, you can smoke at a basketball game if you want to. And how about not having to go outside every 10 minutes when you're in a bar with your friends? The point is, you can smoke blue virtually anywhere. We're all adults here. It's time we take our freedom back. Come on, guys. Rise from the ashes. Of course, that blue cigarette ad by Stephen Dorff. Uh, and I, well, the first thing I notice about this is how it so strongly markets to the notion of freedom and away from offensive odors without mentioning a thing about the health considerations or how much better vaporizing is for you. Here's another commercial featuring actress Jenny McCarthy. You know, I love being single, but here's what I don't love. A kiss that tastes like an ashtray. Blech. I'm Jenny McCarthy, and I finally found a smarter alternative to cigarettes. Blue e-cigs. Blue satisfies me. I get to have a blue without the guilt because there's only vapor, not tobacco smoke. That means no ash, no odor, which also means I don't get the stink eye from others. Also, it doesn't make my hair smell, my teeth turn yellow. You get the idea. That's why I am in love with blue e-cigs. Now that I've switched to blue, I feel better about myself. And I feel free to have one almost anywhere. When I'm driving, at home, watching TV, or when I'm in the club. And no going outside in the rain or freezing my butt off just to take a puff. I can whip out my blue and not worry about scaring that special someone away. You know what I'm saying? Finally with blue, I took back my freedom. Once, once again, you get the uh, e-cigarette ad that speaks to the freedom uh, for the user, uh, and also in the case of marketing to women here, uh, marketing the lack of cigarette smelling hair and turning off a potential uh, suitor uh, because of the smell of cigarettes or the taste of kissing someone who's uh, been smoking cigarettes. And this has been kind of a relatively new phenomenon. And as the use of these electronic cigarettes becomes more popular with endorsements by actors like Jenny McCarthy and Stephen Dorff, uh, the Public health officials are worried now and are raising alarms and scaremongering about these devices leading to underage nicotine use and surreptitious cannabis use. Now, the development of the marketing of these e-cigarettes has capitalized, as you just heard, on this longing for freedom by smokers from these odious anti-smoking laws. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that there were smoking sections in restaurants. It was not unheard of to smoke at some workplaces, on the beach, in a park, wherever. In fact, people of a certain age can even remember when there was smoking allowed on airplanes. So in the course of a generation, we've seen these odious anti-smoking laws forcing uh, users of nicotine products, of tobacco, uh, to have to be 50 feet away from doorways and can't smoke at work and can't smoke in enclosed places and can't even smoke in bars, one of the places that were most associated with cigarette smoke. And there are all sorts of reasons that this came about, the primary reason being the supposed danger of secondhand smoke to people who uh, might be working in these places. But um, these anti-smoking laws spread from California and New York and soon became pretty much the standard for public buildings and public places all throughout the United States. Now, I'm not here to argue whether or not that was a good or bad thing. We can point to reduction in teenage use of cigarettes as a potential good that came out from all of that. But smokers as of late have been social pariahs. So uh, smokers have been forced out in the streets, forced into the cold, into the rain, uh, and forced to pay in some places exorbitant taxes on a pack of cigarettes. And for the longest time, those of us in the cannabis community, um, at the, at the least, didn't stand up for the smokers 
and at the worst, demonized those smokers, and it may come back to bite us on the ass here. I feel that we need to have as many allies as we can possibly have, and we need to broaden our coalition beyond just people who enjoy the freedom to smoke cannabis, but into a coalition of people who enjoy freedom, period. Whether that's smoking cannabis, smoking tobacco, using alcohol, etc. And, and these, the framing of this in the commercials, I really have to applaud the framing of this toward the freedom issue. You know, uh, Stephen Dorff says, I'm tired of feeling guilty every time I want to light up. And we're all adults here. It's time we take our freedom back. Uh, kind of capitalizing on a feeling by a lot of people that this is a nanny state that is now treating American adults like children with respect to their choice of using tobacco. And of course, Jenny McCarthy's quote about the smart, smarter alternative to cigarettes, no ash, no odor, odor, no tobacco scented hair, no stained teeth. And again, that tagline of taking back my freedom. But that same freedom to inhale vaporized nicotine from e-cigarettes comes with unintended consequences that the regulators now and the public health officials are just beginning to understand. In most U.S. states, laws regulating cigarette smoking and tobacco purchases do just that, specifically. That means that the vaporized liquid nicotine, which isn't tobacco, and a handheld vaporizer which isn't a cigarette, do not fall under these regulations. And that would include age limits on purchasing cigarettes. There's been reports of teenagers going to these convenience stores and buying as many of these uh, e-cigarette nicotine vaporizers as they like because technically they're not cigarettes. And the laws uh, protecting, uh, you know, forcing the carding of 18-year-old and under uh, don't apply. According to the Centers for Disease Control, Teen experimentation with e-cigarettes rose from 4.7% in 2011 to 10% in 2012. One out of 10 teenagers between middle school and high school age has tried an e-cigarette. And this has public health officials very worried considering the fact that we've reduced teen cigarette smoking from or the people who have tried cigarettes in their teenage years from 70% in my day to less than 40% today. And they're worried that this may undo years and years of, of teaching, public education, and various tactics to get fewer kids to smoke cigarettes. In fact, regulators are working feverishly now to restrict e-cigarette use by youth and the open use of e-cigarettes by adults. A Florida representative filed a bill today to apply the same restrictions to e-cigarettes as regular cigarettes. An Ohio lawmaker wants to put the same sin taxes on cigarettes on e-cigarettes. New York State has already banned sales to minors, sales near schools, and, uh, and use on public trains. And there's a proposal in Massachusetts that would ban e-cigarette use anywhere cigarette smoking is banned. But all these knee-jerk bans on e-cigarettes ignore one really important point, they are a safer alternative to cigarettes. In Forbes magazine, their latest op-ed written by a medical doctor asks, quote, why is the FDA shielding smokers from the good news about e-cigarettes? End quote. He notes studies that show that e-cigarettes help many smokers successfully quit cigarettes where the patches and the gums and the other things fail. And when most of the bad health effects from smoking come from the smoke, not the nicotine, eliminating, eliminating that smoke would be a net public good. And the doctor also explains that the nonprofits that are behind the anti e cigarette activism are heavily funded by, you guessed it, the pharmaceutical companies that manufacture the pills, the gums, and the patches that they sell to help you quit smoking. They took a look at this in Europe, and European regulators recently rejected calls to treat e-cigarettes and vaporizers as tightly regulated medical devices, and instead went with common sense restrictions, like an age requirement of 18 years old and bans on advertising, like we do for cigarettes. But in the United States, if the reflexive repulsion to adults getting away with nicotine use, and the, what about the children? 
wasn't enough to cripple the nascent e-cigarette industry. Perhaps the media's overdue discovery about the vaporization of cannabis with these e-cigarettes will put the final nail in the coffin. NBC New York uh, investigated this phenomenon. They interviewed High Times' Bobby Black, who explained how the younger generation is embracing it, and this is a new way of consuming cannabis. Vaporization, NBC explained, allows the consumer to use cannabis without the distinctive odor of burning weed. NBC even spoke to a lifelong toker who told of using his cannabis e-cig on the train from Baltimore to New York without being detected. Well, we've long explained to you folks how cannabis vaporization is a healthier alternative to smoke, and many medical marijuana patients in America couldn't use cannabis without vaporization. But now, vaporizers have evolved from those big tabletop volcanoes and silver surfers to these handheld portable vape pens and sticks that are indistinguishable from the e-cigarettes. In fact, some manufacturers now are even responding to certain users who've jerry-rigged their e-cigs to become cannabis vapes by creating new models that can work with nicotine or hash oil. Now, both nicotine and cannabis vaping would be huge public health improvements for this country, but both face an uphill battle against prohibition-minded legislators. Will cannabis vaping become the excuse that states use to ban all e-cigarettes? Or will smokers rise up and fight for their own freedom and, by proxy, help us tokers secure some freedom of our own? I think it's time for us to have an alliance with the cigarette smokers, and to frame our argument as one around freedom. This is gaining traction among adult smokers who are sick and tired of, of being relegated to the back alleys and the rainy shelters and not even being able to smoke in bars. And I think as cannabis smokers that we should jump on that freedom train right now. Because the use of e-cigarettes, if it becomes normalized, if it becomes something that people are used to seeing, will only be a net benefit for us cannabis consumers who will be undetectable amongst all the e-cigarette users. That, of course, is what they fear. They won't be able to tell who's smoking and who's vaping. And my point would be, if we're getting high amongst all the cigarette smokers and you can't tell, what's the damn problem in the first place? All right, folks, that's all the time we got here, but stay tuned for Hour 2 Toker Talk Radio. It's Fired Up Friday. The topics are open. The phone lines are open at 971-533-7111. We're hanging out with Stony and Snap and Brian the Red, and it's going to be a good time for everybody. Also, if you're in the Portland area tonight, I will be appearing on the Ed Foreman Show at Al's Den at the Crystal Hotel downtown starting after Herb Thrasher Flower Hour, so somewhere around 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. We'll be on with Portland's King of Late Night. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> I'll get it filmed. I'll remember to bring enough batteries this time. And we'll show it on next week's show. Folks, that's all the time we got for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Radical Russ. For Stony and Snap and Brian the Red and Left Wing Larry, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you try it, you run it.